Welcome back. My name is Alok Shwastava, and you are you are watching Network Nuts YouTube channel. So it's after a long time uh, we are talking to each other. So in this video, I am going to tell you about the pause container in Kubernetes pods. So the prerequisite for this video is that you should be familiar with the Kubernetes concepts and might be you are working on Kubernetes. We know that the pod is a virtual kind of a boundary and inside the pod runs our containers. Containers means the business application which is running as the container and it is enclosed in something known as a pod and the IP address, the CPU, the memory, all these uh, things are attached on the pod. So if a certain IP is attached on the pod, so the containers will automatically get that IP. So, so this is what we normally know about it. So how the IP is given? So it is actually not the pod which is uh, having the IP address or the network namespace. Inside the pod, there is a secret container which runs in every pod. We call it a pause container, pause container. And there is only single job of the pause container is to hold the network name place, namespace. Sorry. So the IP address is actually given to that pause container. And this pause container, let's suppose this is the pause container. So the pause container is normally created before the business application container. So first the pause container will be created. It will get the IP address, the network namespace, and then the business application container will be created. You can see a couple of seconds of, of a delay or a gap between these two. So the Kubernetes will check this pause container to find out whether the pod is running properly or not. So all the containers, the business applications, which are running inside the pod, refer to this pause container for the IP address. So IP is given to the pause container, not to the pod, as we normally see it logically. But technically, it is actually the pause container, or sometimes it is also referred as the pod infrastructure container, which contains this. So pause container, how can I see the pause container? Right, that's the number one point. Number two point, what happens if the pause container get deleted? We know if the business container get deleted, then the Kubernetes will create the business container or the business application container. But if the pause container get deleted, Kubernetes, as I have told you, Kubernetes uh, check the health of the pod by the pause container. So if the pause container got deleted, then Kubernetes thinks, that, oh, the pod is gone. Right? So it recreates a new pod, a new shiny brand new pod will be created with a new IP address. So this is what I'm going to show you in this video. So I have a small cluster with me, which is already configured. So let's go and check and understand something deep inside the Kubernetes. Let's start it. This is my machine. You are seeing this. This is my new Harley. It's a street bob. Uh, so I have just uh, said goodbye to the Ion883. So this is the one which I am riding right now. This picture is of India Gate uh, around uh, 5 30 a.m. in the morning. So you rarely see some activity here. So let's try this. So I have this uh, cluster which is ready for you. I have done this. This is the cluster here. So just a minute, I should minimize this, yeah. So we have a cluster which is running here. kubectl get node, let me check. Yep, it's running. So I'm going to create a pod. We don't have any pod here, kubectl get pods. Uh, some people call it cube cuttle. So some people call it cube control. It's up to you what you wanted to call. So we have nothing here. I have a very simple pod here, mypod.yaml. I'm going to use this, my pod.yaml. I'm going to use this one. So this is the uh, pod. I had to just switch it off, just a minute. Yeah. So I 
I'm going to run this. I just do a kubectl create or kubectl create my pod.yaml or kube control create my pod.yaml. The pod is created. We normally create the pod and the pod contains the business application. That is what we know. The business application is running inside the container. So if I do a kubectl, uh, oh, sorry, I get pods, it's running there. And if I go uh, hyphen o wide, it is running on port node 2. So I'll go to node 2 and show you. If I do a docker ps hyphen a and I do a grep of uh, my container name was box test. Okay. So I give here box test. You can see there a pause container is created. Right. Now, if you see closely, pause container is created first. It is created some 37 seconds ago and the business application container is created some 33 seconds ago. So first the pause container will be created. So it acquires the network namespace and all the things. And then when the IP is being available to the pod, then the business application or the container will be created. So this is it. Now what will happen if I delete the pause or I stop the pause container? See, please understand this. Kubernetes keeps on monitoring this pause container, right? If Kubernetes is not able to uh, get this pause container, some somehow like he, he is not able to get the pause container. So Kubernetes thinks that the container is died, right? So if you stop the pause container, so you will see that a new IP is given to my pod. The reason is that the moment I stop the pause container, right? So Kubernetes thinks that uh, Kubernetes is not able to access the, the network namespace. When the Kubernetes is not able to access the network namespace, Kubernetes thinks that uh, the application is gone. The container is lost. The pod is lost. So it recreates the, con the container and you can see the restart count will increase. Currently it's zero. Now I am intentionally stopping this pause container, right? I give the command docker stop and paste it. Now I'm stopping the pause container. Now Kubernetes monitor the pod with the help of the pause container. The moment I uh, delete or stop the pause container, Kubernetes has got no way to access the business application. So it thinks the application is lost and it creates a new pod. So the IP will change. Now see here, I do a stop here and I give a get pods here, uh, right, just a minute. See, IP changed and it restarts one time. So the whole business application is restarted. See, if I give the same command again, a new pause container is created and a new business application container is also created. Please understand this. Both are created. It's created 14 seconds ago, I, again, first, it will create the pause container and then it will create the business application container. So if you delete the pause container or the pause container is not accessible by Kubernetes, it thinks that the pod is gone and it creates a new pod, a shiny bright new pod with a new IP address, right? And now if I stop the business container, it won't restart the pod. Docker stop. I'm stopping the business application, right? So when you stop the business application, the network namespace is held by the pause container, right? So Kubernetes is able to access the network namespace. That means, okay, the pod is there, the container is missing. So it will only restart the container, not the pod. So I stop this, right? And I do get Oh yeah, the IP will not change. It has restarted two times. This restart will increment, right? Restart has incremented, but the IP will not change. And if I go here and I check here, I give the same command. See, only the business application is created. Again, the business application container is created. Again, the pause container is still running. So that is the relationship between the pause container and this. There's a picture there, which I would like to show you this one. Just understand these basic points. The pause container is the container that holds all the network namespace together. Pod container is always created first before the main or uh, the application container. It's an infrastructure container whose job is to hold the 
network namespace. So we think that multiple containers are running like this, the picture on your on the left hand side, but actually it is like this. Both the business containers, uh, uh, like container A and the container B, they refer the pod or the pause container for the network and all the things. So if I restart this pod infrastructure container, the whole pod need to be recreated. So this is what is very important from your CKA perspective, certified Kubernetes administrator training, and from your general perspective also that you should know what, what is the importance of the pause container and how it affects the life cycle of the pod. I hope you like it. Thank you very much and I would like to be regular these days. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Godspeed.